So welcome to all of you, Shiksha Three Sixty. And today, basically, we will discuss chapter number ten, Union Budget. Clear Union Budget. This topic, basically, we have to cover in two parts, part one and part two. In the examination point of view, clear. Basically, first of all, basically, we will discuss as per the examination point of view. Clear. Basically, what type of question they will ask? Basically, from this topic. Clear. Basically, what type of question? Basically, they will ask from this topic. Clear. Either basically, you will get theoretical based question. Any chances that basically you will get theoretical based question clear one or two mark based. Otherwise, basically you will get either three or five mark based case study. Clear. Even if they will ask five mark case study, they will ask one or two theoretical based question under that also clear. Even in the five mark case study, basically they will ask one or two theoretical based question clear. Theoretical based question basically simple formula based question they will be asked clear. Which we have to discuss under the part two, clear under the part two, and theoretical points basically we have to discuss under part one, clear. This helps you, clear. Basically, today's session basically help you to solve the numericals, clear, to identify the values, clear. So let's start our today's session. First of all, basically we will discuss little bit regarding the budget, clear, little bit regarding the budget. So the annual budget, clear, annual budget of the country is it is called the union budget, clear. The annual budget of the country is called the union budget. Or we can say that the annual financial statement, annual financial statement, and this statement it is given by the finance minister. Clear? It is given by the finance minister, and this budget is prepared by the finance minister. And presently, the finance minister is Nirmala Sitaram. Okay, so the annual budget of the country it is called the union budget. It is represented by the finance minister in parliament. It was being presented basically on the last working day of February till the year twenty sixteen. Clear basically till twenty sixteen. The budget was represented basically on the last working day of the February. Either it is to be twenty sixth or twenty seventh or twenty eighth or it is to be twenty ninth. Clear. Mainly, mainly it is either twenty seventh, twenty eighth or twenty ninth. Clear. Twenty ninth basically most mainly in the leap years. Clear. Otherwise, this day not exists. Clear. Otherwise, twenty seven or twenty eight. Clear. Basically, the last working day of the February. Clear. But after that, clear basically. But after that, there is a little bit change in the trend. Clear, there is a little bit change in the trend. Clear. <clears throat> Earlier, there is also a separate rail budget, separate rail budget. Clear, but later on, rail budget is also amalgamated, or we can say that merged with the union budget. Clear, basically merged with the union budget. Clear later on, basically rail budget basically merged with the union budget. Clear. So now, basically earlier, basically it is presented on the last day of the February. Now, now it is presented basically on the first of the February. Clear. Now the budget is presented basically on the first of the February. What is the reason behind that? Clear. Basically, why the date has to be changed? Clear. So the rationale behind this change is that it provides time to the government. Clear. Basically, it provides time to the government. To implement it, basically from the first of April, when the new financial year starts, clear, basically earlier, when the budget is basically presented on the twenty eighth of April, basically we can say that it has only just one month, thirty one days, basically we can say that to implement all the things because the new budget basically have to be implemented from the first of April. Clear now, basically what will happen if the budget is represented on the first of February? Clear if the budget is represented on the first of February. Now basically they have at least two months. Now basically they have at least two months basically to formulate all the guidelines clear to do all the work clear so that they can implement it properly clear so they can implement it properly clear. So another change clear another change which government has been introduced clear basically another change basically which government has been introduced from the year twenty seventeen is that the rail budget clear is that the rail budget. Which was earlier presented, clear. Which was earlier presented, basically separately by the railway minister, has now merged with the union budget, clear. Which has earlier, 
present it is separately by the railway minister now has merged with the union budget clear now has merged with the union budget clear so basically this is the overview of the budget clear basically this is the overview of the budget clear so now let's discuss basically what are the components of the budget clear what are the components of the budget clear so the components of the budget it is basically we can say that the revenue budget and the capital budget clear revenue budget and the capital budget clear so basically it is divided under the revenue budget and the capital budget further basically under the revenue budget it either it is to be the revenue expenditure or revenue receipt clear receipt basically we can say that earning clear it is basically first of all it is divided into the revenue budget and the capital budget under the revenue budget basically either it is to be the revenue expenditure or it is to be the revenue receipt clear receipt basically we can say that earning expenditure basically we can say that spending similarly under the capital budget also basically we have capital expenditure basically capital expenditure basically we can say that for the assets for the creation of the assets clear capital basically we can say that capital used basically for the creation of the assets clear and capital receipt clear capital receipt clear basically we can say that basically income basically from any loan clear or from any asset clear basically every land clear next one is the revenue receipt clear revenue receipt is further of either it is to be tax revenue or it is to be non tax revenue clear either it is to be tax revenue or it is to be non tax revenue clear non tax revenue basically we can say that like basically we will charge some fees clear like basically we will charge some fees like you are purchasing a new car clear you are purchasing a new car clear so on that basically sometimes basically government will charge some fees on that also clear along with the tax government will charge some fees also clear from that clear so it to differentiate both so tax revenue and non tax revenue clear under the tax revenue clear it is either it is to be direct tax or it is to be indirect tax clear and under the tax revenue clear it is either to be direct tax or it is to be indirect tax clear so you just have to remember here clear components revenue budget or capital budget under the revenue budget either basically we have revenue expenditure or the revenue receipt similarly under the capital budget basically we have capital expenditure or the capital receipt clear and under the revenue receipt clear under the revenue receipt basically from where basically we will get earning either from the tax or from the non tax revenue clear either the tax revenue or the non tax revenue and under the tax revenue basically we have either direct tax or indirect tax clear either direct tax or the indirect tax clear so let's little bit more discussion regarding that this is the overall discussion revenue receipts and the capital receipts clear revenue receipts and the capital receipts clear so revenue receipts basically tax income or tax revenue and the non tax revenue that is components and capital receipt this one is the components clear so under the tax revenue as basically here basically we have already discussed tax revenue we have direct tax or indirect tax clear under the tax revenue basically we have both direct tax and in indirect tax clear so here under the tax revenue basically we have direct tax and indirect tax clear so what is the meaning of direct tax and indirect tax here clear so direct tax basically liability to pay and burden of tax falls on the same person clear liability to pay and burden of tax falls basically on the same person clear and burden of tax falls basically on the same person clear like basically we can say that if you are earning above 5 lakh clear basically if you are earning above 5 lakh just give an example clear so you have to pay the tax clear you have to pay the tax clear so to your basically you are earning and you you have the responsibility to pay the tax clear and falls on the same person indirect tax basically we, we can say that what is the meaning of indirect tax <laughs> like you are purchasing something from the market clear like you are purchasing something from the market clear so indirectly basically we have to pay the tax here clear indirectly basically we have to pay the tax here clear so liability to pay and burden of tax falls basically on the other person clear liability to pay and burden of tax falls basically on the other person clear that is basically indirect tax clear that is basically indirect tax so direct tax basically liability to pay and burden falls on the same person and burden of tax falls basically on the same person indirect tax basically liability to pay and burden of tax falls basically on the different persons clear and burden of tax falls basically on the different persons clear so basically what are the components included under that clear so now basically we have to check out basically what are the components basically included under that 
So basically under the direct tax, basically we have income tax, corporation tax, expenditure tax, wealth tax, state duty. And under the indirect tax, basically we have sales tax, custom duty, excise duty, service tax, VAT, basically value added tax. Clear? So these are things basically comes under the indirect tax. Clear? So now what is basically comes under the non-tax revenue. Clear? Now basically what comes under the basically non-tax revenue. Clear? Now basically what it comes under the basically non-tax revenue. So under the non-tax revenue, basically it comes basically, first of all, basically interest receipts. Clear, basically we are earning interest. Clear, basically we are earning interest. Second one is profits and dividends. Like basically we can say that government have invested in some company, clear, in some company, clear. So basically after the financial results, clear, every year, clear, basically they are getting a profit or basically we can say that a dividend from that company, clear, dividend from that company. Next one here, basically, that is fees and fines. Clear that is fees and fines. Clear, like basically, we can say that basically for any registration, clear for the registration, we can say that for the registration of home. So basically, we have to pay a government fees. Clear, or basically, we can say that basically we have to register our vehicle. Clear, so basically, we have to pay a fees. So that are basically comes under the fees, or basically, we can say that government also collects a lot different types of fines. Clear, or are comes basically under the non tax revenue external grants or special assessment clear or special assessment clear all these things basically comes under the non-tax revenue and next one is the capital receipts clear capital receipt that is a recovery of the loans clear recovery of the loans or disinvestment clear disinvestment like basically we can say that you will see that basically government has a target of basically we can say that ten thousand crore disinvestment target clear like basically in the year 2016 clear in that year 2016 clear Government basically takes disinvestment from IDBI, clear? Disinvestment basically from the IDBI. It means that basically they are reducing their shares from that, clear? Basically, they are reducing their shares, not basically share, clear? Earlier, basically, government has basically more than 51% in that. Now, basically, they want to reduce their share, clear? Now, they want to reduce their share, clear? So, that is basically comes under the disinvestment. Or basically, we can say that borrowings or provident funds clear so all are related to the capital receipt clear basically all are related to the capital receipt clear so here basically we will see that this investment clear so basically we can say that basically reduction in the asset of the government clear reduction in the asset of the government clear so basically if there is an impact on the asset or liability clear if there is an impact on the asset or liability so that is basically comes under the capital clear that is basically comes under the capital clear and here basically there is not any discussion there is not any discussion of the asset or liability not any discussion either of the asset or liability clear it is directly straight forward so that is basically we can say that the revenue shift clear that is we can say that the revenue shift clear if there is not any discussion of the asset or liability clear there is not any discussion of the asset or liability so basically in the simple language we can say that under the revenue clear under the revenue Either it is to be received clear under the revenue, either it is to be received. That is basically we can say that received basically we can say that income or it basically spending. Revenue spending or basically we can say that revenue expenditure. Clear. So under the revenue clear. So basically if there is no change, basically we can say no liability or asset discussion clear no liability or asset discussion that is basically comes under the revenue or if there is any change and if there is any change either in the asset any change either in the asset or liability that is basically comes under the capital clear that is basically comes under the capital clear so you have to remember these things clear you have to remember this thing and basically from that basically we are able to understand all these things clear basically we are able to understand all these things clear that's why first of all i will discuss all the example with you clear that's why basically first of all i will discuss all the example with you so that basically only after going through the examples clear only after going through the example you are able to understand all these points clear basically you are able to understand all these points one by one clear you are able to understand all these points one by one clear so now let's discuss first of all basically revenue receipts clear 
Now discuss basically first of all basically we have to discuss the revenue receipts. Clear? Revenue receipts basically we consider basically earning. Clear? Basically from where basically we get earning. Clear? Basically from where basically we will get earning. Clear? So revenue receipts that is earning of the government. And one thing more basically it has not an impact on the asset or liability. Clear? It has not an impact on the asset or liability. Clear? Clear? Not any, we can say that the reduction of the asset clear or not any liability arises. Clear? Liability arises basically we can say that. Like basically if the government is taking any loan, clear? Basically if the government is taking any loan, so basically it has arises the liability on the government that they have to pay back. Clear? That they have to pay back. Clear? Principal plus interest. Clear? So there is basically we can say that arising of the liability. Rising of the liability, clear. So, but under the revenue receipt, clear. Under the revenue receipt, basically there is not any liability, clear. That because this is the tax, clear. Because this is the tax, or basically we can say that this is the law, clear. That the person has to pay the tax, clear. If the specific amount of level is increases, clear, or other different types of taxes, clear. So, under the tax revenue, clear. Under the tax revenue, clear. Basically, what type of taxes? Basically, we have to cover corporation tax, income tax. Other taxes and duties, customs, union excise duty, union excise duties, basically we can say that related to the union territories, clear, union territory, service tax or taxes of the union territories, clear, union excise duties, basically with respect to the, sorry, it is basically with respect to the central level, clear, with respect to the, with respect to the central level, clear, excise duty and taxes of the union territories, clear, taxes of the union territories, clear, because Union territories are basically directly controlled by the central government. Clear, directly controlled by the central government. Clear. So all the taxes of that also clear basically will directly go to the central government. Clear will directly go to the central government. Like basically, we can say that basically you are residing in the U Haryana. And you are basically visiting the market, and you can say that basically you are purchasing a shirt. So basically when you will find basically when you purchase a shirt basically from any mall you will find that clear basically that price of the shirt is 2000 clear along with the 2000 clear basically they will say that plus 18 percent gst so among that 18 percent gst you will somewhere you will see that it say that nine percent cgst or nine percent sgs or sometimes basically IGST is also mentioned. Clear? IGST basically integrated GST as CGST basically for the center as to basically state GST. Clear? So basically we can say that basically we have to pay the tax here. Clear? Basically we have to pay the tax here. And that tax basically directly goes to the government of India. Clear? That tax basically directly goes to the government of India. Either it is to be a state tax or it is to be a central tax. Clear? Either it is to be the state tax or it is to be a central tax. But directly, basically, it will go to the government of India. Clear, basically, but directly, it will go to the government of the India. Clear. So, this is the gross tax revenue. Clear, basically, this is the gross tax revenue. Gross tax revenue, basically, we can say that IGST. Just basically, we are taking an example as GST or CGST. Now, what will happen? Basically, CGST is the central right or union government, a central government. Clear, but SGST is basically related to the state because they have to give back to the state, clear? Because they have to give back to the state, clear? This interest rate, clear? Or this collection, clear? So under the gross, basically, all these things are to be included, clear? Under the gross, basically, all these things are to be included. But under the net, clear? But under the net tax revenue, clear? But under the net tax revenue, basically, we have to do some deductions, clear? But under the net tax revenue, basically, we have to do some deduction. That is gross tax revenue minus, and CCD clear minus MCCD minus state share clear minus state share basically we can say that minus SGST. This is just for the example here clear just this is just for the example here so that you are able to understand all the things clear. And I request to all of you please understand or remember all the things clear like this is basically comes under the tax revenue clear because in the examination they will ask directly straightforward question from that clear basically which of the following comes under the tax revenue clear now next is what is that net tax revenue clear basically out of the total tax clear of the gross tax revenue basically some 
amount is left basically transfer to the national calamity contingency fund clear national calamity contingency fund clear so what is that type of fund clear sometimes basically you will see that basically there is floods going in the country or there is some earthquake clear or there is some emergency arises clear so basically for that government needs urgent fund clear basically for that government needs urgent fund clear so basically that is basically national calamity contingency fund clear so government has to put some funds in that field also clear in that field also so at the time of uh, the emergency clear so at the time of the emergency basically they will utilize these funds clear so at the time of the emergency basically they will utilize these funds clear so net tax revenue is equal to gross tax revenue we can say that if they are earning rupees 100 clear if they are earning rupees 100 rupees 100 is the gross tax revenue 20 rupees basically they will transfer to that one and 30 rupees they will transfer to the state share clear so how much left basically with the government with the 50 rupees clear so government left with the 50 rupees in their hands clear government left with the 15 rupees in their hands clear so that is the net tax revenue clear that is the net tax revenue that is the tax basically which left in the hand of the central government clear that is the amount or basically revenue basically which left in the hands of the central government clear that is basically known as the net tax revenue clear that is basically known as the net tax revenue so please tell fast if you have any doubt any query up to this much point clear so all these things basically comes under the tax revenue clear all these things basically comes under the tax revenue as basically we have discussed next one basically non tax revenue clear non tax revenue and you have to remember basically both these things direct tax and indirect tax also clear direct tax and indirect tax also clear so now next one is the total non tax revenue clear basically total non tax revenue clear total non tax revenue basically we can say that basically first of all interest receipts clear interest receipts clear like basically we can say that government is issuing some funds clear to any organization clear so basically they will get interest from that or dividends or profits clear like basically we can say that government has investment in the gale gas authority of india limited clear gale i think gale clear so basically they are we can say that basically they are getting profit from that also clear basically in the form of the dividend clear in the form of the dividend clear or other external grants clear other external grants basically like we can say that there is any calamity arises in the country clear calamity or we can say that basically there is any natural disaster clear so basically we will get funds from the other countries clear basically in the form of the donation clear in the form of the donation in the form of donation or grants in the form of donation or grants so that is basically comes under that clear no total non tax revenue clear that is external grants clear because we not have to refund back these amounts clear because we do not have to refund back these amounts clear that is basically comes under the non tax revenue or other non tax revenue or receipts of the union territories clear or receipts of the union territories clear <clears throat> all these things clear basically or receipt of the union territories clear so all these things basically comes under the non tax revenue clear all these things basically comes under the non tax revenue hope it is clear to all of you now basically we have to move to the next one clear now basically we have to move to the next one there so in this first of all under the revenue receipts clear under the revenue receipts clear under the revenue receipts basically we have to discuss the tax revenue and also the non tax revenue clear also the non tax revenue and under the tax revenue clear basically we have discussed first of all gross tax and out of that clear basically we have to discuss net tax also clear net tax also net tax basically how we can find that gross tax deducted basically funds transfer to the nccd so can anyone tell basically what is the full form of nccd minus state tax clear minus a state tax clear so i request to all of you please tell what is the full form of nccd clear you will find one mark question in the examination basically what is the full form of nccd clear because this question is also mentioned in the book clear this question is also mentioned in the book that is expand nccd clear expand nccd clear so i request to all of you please remember national calamity contingency fund clear national calamity contingency fund clear contingency what is the meaning of contingency here can anyone tell basically what is the meaning of contingency here we can say that contingency basically we can say that emergency clear emergency fund clear emergency fund so now next basically we have to discuss regarding the 
टोटल रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स क्लियर टोटल रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स बेसिकली टोटल रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स बेसिकली नेट टैक्स रेवेन्यू प्लस टोटल नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू क्लियर नेट टैक्स रेवेन्यू नॉट हियर इट इज टू बी ग्रॉस टैक्स रेवेन्यू नेट टैक्स रेवेन्यू क्लियर टोटल रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स बेसिकली नेट टैक्स रेवेन्यू और वी कैन से दैट ग्रॉस माइनस एनसीसीडी माइनस स्टेट प्लस टोटल नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू क्लियर प्लस टोटल नॉन टैक्स रेवेन्यू क्लियर नो नेक्स्ट वन बेसिकली वी हैव टू डिस्कस द कैपिटल रिसीट्स क्लियर कैपिटल रिसीट्स क्लियर दैट आर बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू द एसेट और लायबिलिटी क्लियर विद द दैट बेसिकली देयर इज सम चेंजेस आइदर इन द एसेट और द लायबिलिटी क्लियर सो कैपिटल रिसीट बेसिकली इज इक्वल टू नॉन डेप्ट नॉन डेप्ट रिसीट्स प्लस द डेप्ट रिसीट्स क्लियर टोटल कैपिटल रिसीट्स बेसिकली इज इक्वल टू द नॉन डेप्ट रिसीट्स और non debt receipts plus debt receipts clear plus the debt receipts clear so now let's discuss regarding that clear first of all basically non debt receipts clear first of all basically regarding the non debt receipts clear basically recoveries of the loans and advances clear recoveries of the loans and advances like basically there is a loan given to any other country clear loan given to any other country like basically we can say that to the bhutan clear so earlier basically we are getting only interest from that clear earlier basically we are getting only interest from that clear interest from that clear now basically we can say that now the bhutan will pay the whole amount like basically we can say that basically we are giving 1 lakh crore loan to the bhutan clear now basically they will give all the loan amount back clear all the loan amount back clear so now basically we can say that basically earlier there is it is a asset of the indian government clear now basically the, when the whole amount is to be returned so basically we can say that there is a reduction in the asset clear basically we can say that there is a reduction in the asset clear there is a reduction in the asset because they will give you the whole amount clear that is the recovery of loan or advance clear recovery of loan or advance clear so basically we can say that basically it leads to the reduction in the asset <coughs> reduction in the asset clear because as basically from the starting basically we are discussing loan or assets or basically deposits are liabilities so next one is miscellaneous capital receipts clear miscellaneous capital receipts clear so all these things basically comes under the non debt receipts so do you just have to remember clear you just have to remember it, that is recovery of loans and advances basically comes under the non debt receipts clear basically comes under the non debt receipts clear now next discuss basically what are comes under the debt receipts clear Now, basically, what is comes under the debt receipts? Clear market loans, short-term borrowings, external assistance, securities issued against the small savings, state provident funds, other shifts. Clear other shifts. Clear. So basically, these are those things. Basically, which we have to pay give back. Clear. Basically, which we have to give back. Clear. Basically, which we have to give back. Like basically, we can say that we have borrowed. Like basically, we have borrowing money. Clear. Basically, we have borrowing money from any other institution. Clear. Basically, we are borrowing money from any other institution. Like basically, we can say that basically for the bullet train project, which is basically from Ahmedabad to Mumbai. Clear. Basically, we are taking loan of thirty thousand crore from Japan. Clear. So that is basically our borrowing. Clear. That is one of our borrowings. Clear. So basically, we have to pay back. Clear. So basically, we have to pay back. That is basically we can say that our liability is increasing. Clear. Our liability is increasing in that. Clear. Our liability is increasing. Clear. Because we have to pay that back or other any external assistance. Clear. Any other external assistance. Basically, we can say that like line of credit. Like line of credit. Clear. Basically, we can say that. Loan to any other country, clear in the form of that, clear or securities issued basically against small saving state provident funds, clear basically which we, they have to give to the individual or to the organization, clear basically general for the example, clear and other shifts, clear all other things basically are also comes under that, clear so small savings, clear small savings basically we can say that like some government schemes. Like basically, you will find that basically in the provident fund, clear PPF, clear basically you have the tenure of the PPF is fifteen years, clear, and lock-in period, clear minimum lock-in period is five years, clear because at least five years basically you have to keep funds under that, clear 
you have to keep fund under that yes so basically it is the liability of the government clear it is the liability of the government because they have to give the funds in that clear because they have to give back the funds in that clear so that is basically we can say that clear so all these things are basically the liability clear all these things are basically the liability is clear that is basically comes under the debt receipts that is market loans short term borrowings external assistance clear securities they should basically again the small savings state provident funds other shifts etc clear so these are shifts are basically net of repayments clear these are shifts are basically net of the repayments so in the net sell basically what we will discuss basically what are the total receipts clear basically what are the total receipts here clear total receipts basically we can say that first of all revenue receipts plus capital receipts plus draw down of cash balances clear plus draw down of cash balances clear so total receipts basically here total revenue receipts plus capital receipts plus draw down of cash balances clear plus draw down of cash balances clear so here basically one more term arises basically what is the meaning of draw down of cash balances clear basically we have already discussed this one we have already discussed this one clear basically but we have not discussed basically draw down of cash balances clear draw down of cash balances clear so basically as you will find that basically if you directly put this term in the google basically draw down of cash balances clear so basically you will get single line basically as on the rbi website clear so draw down of cash balances basically we can say that they represent variation in the treasury bill clear basically represent variation in the treasury bill issued a net change net of changes in cash balances with the rbi clear basically in cash balances with the rbi clear so draw down of cash balance basically represent variation in the treasury bills issued net of changes basically in the cash balances with the rbi clear in cash balances with the rbi clear so let's understand basically with the help of one example like we can see that basically government of india basically issued a treasury bill of rupees 1000 clear and you are getting that treasury bill clear you are getting that treasury bill clear and for a specific tenure clear for a specific tenure clear and later what will happen the there is a reduction in the interest rate clear there is a reduction in the interest rate or the there is a change in the value of that treasury bill clear there is a change in that in the value of that treasury bill clear that is basically we can say the value is reduces to 800 clear the value is reduces to 800 clear so on the maturity of the treasury bill clear on the maturity of the treasury bill basically the government has to pay this much amount clear the government has to pay basically rupees 1000 but the value is going to be reduction is rupees 800 clear that is the reduction is rupees 800 clear so basically 200 basically government has to pay from itself clear government has to pay basically from their own funds clear so that is basically comes under the drawdown of cash balances clear represent basically variation in the treasury bills issued net of changes basically in cash balances with the rbi clear in cash balances with the rbi clear so that is also comes under the total receipt that is total revenue receipts plus capital receipts plus draw down of cash balances clear plus draw down of cash balances and what is financing of fiscal deficit clear so no need to think over that basically what is the meaning of fiscal deficit clear so because we have to discuss all this thing in the next session clear regarding the fiscal deficit clear just you have to remember basically financing of fiscal deficit is equal basically debt receipts plus draw down of cash balances clear debt receipt plus draw down of cash balances clear so what is fiscal deficit what is primary fiscal deficit clear all these things basically we have to discuss in the next session in detail clear with the help of examples clear regarding all this things clear so in this session basically what is the important thing basically you have to remember clear regarding all these things clear basically what is revenue receipt under that basically what is tax revenue and what is non tax revenue and what is capital receipts clear what is capital receipt clear basically in this session basically we have not discussed anything regarding the expenditure clear we have not discussed anything regarding the expenditure clear so in the next session basically we have to discuss regarding the expenditure or what is fiscal deficit or what is primary deficit clear all these things basically along with the formulas of all these things basically we have to discuss in the next session clear basically we have to discuss in the next session and basically we will try to discuss some numericals on the basis of that in the next session also clear so that basically you are able to understand all the formulas clear you are able to understand all the formulas regarding that clear so thanks to all of you for attending this session and please go through this slide also clear like basically which we have already discussed first clear as these are very basic terms and i think all of you are aware regarding all these terms but sometimes in the examination they will ask question from that also clear but sometimes in the examination basically they will ask question 
from that also clear that's why i'm saying that basically please remember all these things also clear so thanks to all of you for attending this session